up here uh, just a few feet below the summit, summit's right up there, of the Big Horseshoe as San Pete 2 benchmark from the USGS. And this will be uh, my second video, kind of part two, of describing these high elevation conifers up on the top of the Wasatch Plateau. Um, in my earlier video, I looked at Eagle Man Spruce, it's uh, Mycia Eagle Manii. Now, right here, just below the summit, um, you know, five or ten feet below this rocky ridge, um, is another species. That's uh, Pinus flexilis. Now, this one's limber pine. And so this one's in the pine family, like the spruces and firs. Uh, however, it's also in the, the pine genus, Pinus. Pinus flexilis is one of our uh, really nice five-needled pines. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show you that here. All, all trees in, in Pinus have fascicled needles. So if we pull one of these bunches off of the branch, um, you can see where it meets the branch. Hopefully that's visible. Where it meets the, the tip of this little branch here, the needles are come off in a group or a fascicle. And um, if we pull these guys off together, we should see that there's five. And yes, right there are five needles together in that bunch. Um, so the, the five needled pines are often found in places like this, on the tops of mountains um, or on really exposed uh, ridge lines where there's a lot of wind. And the character and shape of these trees um, is, is uh, really um, indicative that they're experiencing some wind. Um, I'll look at the one closest to me and then maybe look at the others. Uh, so this tree's about, I don't know, maybe seven feet tall, a little bit taller than me. And we can clearly see, if I get my finger in the right place for the video, um, on this side right here, there's kind of some exposed branches without any needles. And uh, up here, of course, the tallest part of the tree, you know, is, are kind of these couple of stems that come up, that one branches, but they're devoid of most needles as well. Most of the biomass is lowered to the ground. And just like the the Ingleman spruce in my previous video, that's probably a good indicator um, to us that this tree is experiencing some sort of adverse effect from wind and, and cold during the winter. Um, we can tell which direction the wind is coming from, just like on the Ingleman spruce, the wind is probably hitting this side of the tree. So the wind, if we look where the wind is coming from, the wind is probably coming from this way, is it? And the wind is coming from right over here right now. That's kind of um, a wind that's blowing out of the, the west or northwest. That's probably a common track of storms that come up, hit this mountain, and bam, right into this tree, causing some unhappiness for this little guy. Um, and again, just like the spruce, the snow line is probably about right here on this guy. Um, because above that, we see more bare branches. Below that, the tree is a little bit uh, more full and, and healthy looking. Um, so just like uh, the, that close one that we just looked at, this guy even has more dead in its branches. Uh, it's growing, you know, a, a couple feet above the one we just looked at. That might have something to do with it. Um, but uh, anyways, and this one too is uh, has some wind exposure, some signs of wind exposure. And these guys are really high growing up here at uh, over 11,000 feet, 11,000, probably 75 feet right here. And, um, you know, the mountaintop above us is mostly rock. There's a little current. It's probably Ribe's um, cerium, wax current. Uh, anyways, and some other little alpine wildflowers. But uh, for the most part, 
up here at 11,000 feet on the Wasatch Plateau, we start to see some more bare, you know, rocky ground. But this, I think this uh, mountaintop, and we're about to be hit by the sun, right most uh, over there, the uh, west side of the horseshoe is in the sun. Anyways, I think, I think these peaks must especially get hit by wind. Um, lots of sign of wind, very few trees, because as I'm looking over here to the uh, north, uh, kind of the northeast of where I'm at right here, these are the tent mountains, so named because supposedly they look kind of like a sprawling tent. But this is South Tent, and the top of that is 11,285 feet. Uh, it's a couple hundred feet higher than we are here. Probably doesn't make a big difference, but if you look at the top of South Tent, that is mostly covered in trees. Probably a lot of Engelman spruce. I've been to the top, I don't think there's any liver pine right at the top, but probably a lot of spruce and maybe some uh, subalpine fir, Aves plesiocarpa. And kind of the north tent doesn't have as many trees on it, and maybe that's a sign that the the, the brunt of the wind coming from the west northwest comes from over here and hits north tent first. And we have that big exposed sign of the north tent on the west face. And that's probably due to steepness and, and soil erosion, also maybe elevation. But my, my point that I wanted to make is that the tops of the tents, and especially south tent, which is maybe a little bit more shielded from the wind, has more trees higher up than even here on the on the San Pete 2 benchmark. We do have a few here, but you know, I think um, high elevation trees up here on the Wasatch Plateau, their distribution has to do a lot with, with where they're growing on ridge lines. You know, we're right next to this steep drop off into the big horseshoe right here. So there's lots of factors that, that play into the growth and the distribution of these uh, couple of species that are able to uh, subsist up here. Anyways, the sun's out and it's a nice afternoon on the Wasatch Plateau.